And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we're going to shift over to the WNBA and talk about the start of their season. So, previously, um, the preseason was going on, and that's where the hype around Caitlin originally started. And it would seem that a lot of people are being doubtful of Caitlin and her abilities in the WNBA. And I really don't understand why. Because it's just a preseason game. And, like, you still have to adjust. It took Victor a couple of games to adjust. And here he is winning unanimous rookie of the year after adjusting. Like, that's what a lot of these players need. You're not going to go into the big leagues and immediately perform like that. Like, that's just a fallacy. Like, there's only a very few people that can do that. And you really need... It's unfair to give a player that small of a window and that small of a time frame to decide whether or not they're good and you really need to give them time to somewhat adjust so with that in mind this is going to be the start of the WNBA season and the Indiana Fever they're obviously going to be the most popular game going on they start at 7 30 on ESPN plus and they're going to play the Connecticut Sun but really the big, the big focus is going to be on Caitlyn and her debut with the Indiana Fever. They completely changed the venue of where the games were going to be played to allow more people in the stands and to allow more people to experience Caitlyn with their very own eyes. She's a very talented basketball player. It doesn't matter whether you're a guy or a male or a female. She is talented. And if you're saying that she's not talented, then you're just a hater. It's that simple. But... It would seem that, like, I really don't like how the WNBA season starts now. Like, I really think it's a very awkward time for the season to start. Because, again, it's in the middle of the NBA playoffs. And with the stipulation around women's basketball already, it's going to be very difficult to attract many viewers into, the, into these games over the playoff games. Like, the game, um, the Indiana Fever, they play at 7.30, but guess who also plays at around 7.30, 7 o'clock? The Knicks. And given how the series is tied now, it's a very, very competitive series, a lot of people are going to want to tune into this game to see who's going to take the 3-2 lead and who's going to have the best chance of winning the series in the end. Like... It's a very awkward time to start the WNBA the WNBA season and that's prob that's partly like why the WNBA hasn't been able to gain much traction with um when compared to the NBA because their season starts right in the middle of the playoffs and that's a li- I think that's a little bit of an unfair start for them like it shouldn't it shouldn't start now with um the second round. What it sh- when it should start, it should start when every single NBA team is um in the uh, is in the conference finals. That's when those um WNBA games should start because grant now that um since we're still in the semifinal round in or the second round, however you want to call it. There's still, like, there's multiple teams that are going to be playing in one day. Like, you have the Pacers, and then immediately after, you have the Timberwolves. If the WNBA season were to start a little bit later, where you only have one team playing at a time, like, one team a day, then you'll be able to gain a lot more traction, because you can have, let's say, for example, the season were to start a little bit later, and um, into the conference final round. So you'd have one game that would start, you'd have a ge- the NBA game that would start at like maybe, I'd say nine or 10, but then you can have a WNBA game just before that, starting at like 7.30, thus um, on national television, thus gaining more traction and more attention from a lot of the fans and Therefore, the WNBA would be a lot more popular because right before 
the um the playoff game, they'll tune in to the WNBA game. And it was very difficult to market the WNBA, but right now with Caitlin and with all like with the rest of the talent that came in from this draft class in the WNBA, like Cameron Brink and Angel Reese and all those other all those other female athletes, like now would be a great time to sort of maybe push back the season just a, just a little bit. Like I th- in order to gain the traction that they need because starting in the middle of the postseason where there's multiple games going on like it's going to take up a lot of viewership because the games will start at eight o'clock and then there's going to be several other games in the WNBA starting at 10 like the um the phoenix the phoenix mercury and um the las vegas aces they're going to be playing at 10 p.m right when the Let's see, let me just go back to the the NBA schedule. They're going to be playing right when the Timberwolves and the Nuggets are just about to start with the tip-off. And, like, it's really, it's it's somewhat, it's bad timing. I mean, like, their games, they start 30 minutes before the playoff games, but still, not many people are going to want to tune into that or even finish tuning into that game as opposed to watching a playoff game in the NBA. Like, it's really difficult to compete with the NBA in the postseason if you are playing basketball. And not to mention, they also have a little bit of bad luck because the Olympics are going to start soon as well. And the Olympics are going to take up the viewership from the WNBA again. So it's really just bad. It's really bad timing. And I think it's really unfair because... I want to tune into these games, but I also want to tune into the playoffs. Like, I could flip flop back and forth, but I want to focus on one game. And I really feel like if they were to play, maybe a li- if if they were going to start the WNBA season, I feel like these games should start a little bit earlier than seven o'clock. When I understand it's prime time, but the NBA playoffs are going on. So you have to sort of adjust to the um to the rest of the schedule of the NBA and to maximize that viewership. So that's basically like the only problem that I have with the WNBA. It's like when their season starts because it starts in the middle of the playoffs and nobody talks about it. Like nobody is going to talk about now there's going to be people talking about the debut of the W like the start of the WNBA season because of Caitlin Clark. But if it weren't for her, there wasn't there was going to be zero coverage on the WNBA. There was going to be zero announcement that the WNBA season started. And it's more like, oh, the WNBA just started. Wow, what a coincidence. Like, it's not a big thing. And I feel like that's a very, very big problem with the WNBA and why like their marketing team and their scheduling is really, really bad. Like, you can't have these same you can't have these WNBA games happening the same time as the NBA games are going on you just can't and you're never going to gain any traction doing that and that honestly it makes that sort of opens my eyes as to why the WNBA hasn't been as popular it's bec- it's partly because of when the season starts granted the WNBA in my opinion never had a player as talented as Caitlin before and I know Caitlyn hasn't played a game in the WNBA yet, but I mean, come on. If you guys don't think she's going to be the best player in the WNBA, I think there is something wrong with you. She moves completely different from every single WNBA player that I've seen. She shoots completely different than any other WNBA player that I've seen. And I've watched several clips, and I've watched a lot of these games um, to, to tell you guys that she moves different like she is different and she her and juju they both move different they move like they've played with professional men players before and they know how to get a bucket on them they just move differently they aren't clumsy they're clean their shump shot is clean like everything about them is clean and those two women they're going to elevate a lot of these WNBA players and a lot of the WNBA players, they were hating on Caitlyn because it's like, I don't know why these um these WNBA athletes were hating on her. Like, I'm, I underst- I'd understand, like, the team, but 
because they would they might be a little bit jealous. The same thing happened to LeBron when he was on the Cavs. Like nobody expected every single one of his teammates doubted him and he completely proved the doubters wrong. But other players, they they gave him praise. Like they would um they would hope for the best in in everything. And all these women athletes, they were hoping for the worst with um with Caitlyn. And I really don't understand why that is. Like she is going she's going to elevate your league and here you are just putting her down and like not even trying to show her any kind of respect like they were talking like oh that stuff's not going to fly in the WNBA yes it is I'm sorry but yes it is like her gameplay her game style and like um her style of play it will work in the WNBA nobody in the WNBA is going to be able to check her mark my words no one in the WNBA is going to be able to guard her period done she's that good but that's basically all I have to say about the WNBA and their games. And again, I really like I really wished that they started at a completely different time. Like it would be they could have started the games at like 3 three thirty. Like they start the playoff games at around 3 three thirty. I mean, I understand it's still a work day for some for some people and it's still a work day for like um, and it's still a school day for some students as well. But I mean, 3.30 or maybe even 4 o'clock or 5, that sounds like a rather decent time to start these um, to start these games right before the postseason games go in. So you have WNBA, and then immediately after that, you still have more basketball, but it's playoff basketball. Like, I would really like that format to, um, to watch these games. But that's essentially all I have for this fourth segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the fifth segment where I talk about the Atlanta Hawks recently getting the number one pick in the draft and what I think they should do with it. So I will be right back after this short break.